so Joel Richardson is riffing here on the truth about Christianity, wow. about Islam, and uh, excited about an extended interview. Thanks for sticking around, Joel. Yeah. Um, is the religion of Islam dangerous, in your opinion? Well, really, it's not even my opinion. I think anybody that reads the Quran and sees the incredibly imperialistic, intolerant, uh, and violent nature of the Quran is, is going to have to acknowledge the fact that Islam is dangerous. Uh, now, a lot of people say, well, that's hateful. You're not being very kind toward Muslims. But the fact of the matter is, is that Muslims have always been, moderate liberal Muslims have always been the first ones that suffer from the imperialism, from the intolerance, wow. from the violence of Islam. We look at ISIS or the Islamic State right now in Iraq and Syria, and it's the individuals, they call them the, um, the munifikin, they, they call them the hypocrites. We would call them the moderate Muslims. They're always the first ones to suffer, as well as all of the various minority sects of Islam. Uh, and of course, as well as women and children. Minorities are always the first ones to suffer under Islam. So the answer is yes. Those in Iraq and Syria today are following the example of Muhammad, mm -hmm. as well as his earliest uh, successors and his followers Really what we're seeing today is exactly what we saw in the early years of conquest when Islam was just beginning. Well, in your book, I think you talk about this, Mark Gabriel discusses this in his book. I'm curious, do you, do you really believe that Islam has a plan to take over the world? Oh, there's no question about it. Uh, there's a Islamic sacred tradition known as a Hadith. Uh, wherein Muhammad is alleged to have said, and of course Muslims believe this is you know, sacred, divinely inspired, Muhammad said, it has been given unto me to fight against the unbelievers until there are none left who say anything other than none has the right to be worshipped other than Allah. So essentially he said it, God gave him the mandate to bring forth the final religion and it would spread throughout the earth until there's no one left who's not a Muslim. So does Islam have a goal to take over the world? Yes, Muhammad did. He believed it was divinely inspired. Muslims are called to imitate Muhammad. And so Muslims that are being good Muslims are, are making efforts to, yes, take over the world, absolutely. So as they strive, the more they strive to understand and have the right religion, they're actually being led right down this road all the way to jihad. That's, that's, that's the conclusion. Yeah, you know, and it, you know, to qualify this, it, we have to be clear, the majority of Muslims really don't read the Quran, uh, you know, culturally speaking there are plenty of Muslims that really don't they don't have Quran studies like we might have Bible studies and so a lot of them they look at it almost as a magic book it's intended to be recited in Arabic uh, most Muslims don't speak Arabic because most Muslims are outside of the Middle East um, but when they start becoming more uh, educated with regard to Islam studying the Quran and making efforts to follow what they read in the Quran as well as in the Hadith literature follow the example of Muhammad, then they will always become more violent. They'll always wow. become more hateful. They'll always become more intolerant of anyone that's not a Muslim. And that's just a fact. Now, as Christians, we look to the Bible as our holy book. And I think, uh, I, I know as a Christian, I do this often. I think a lot of our viewers, they try to make parallels between Christianity and Islam. Um, so we go Bible, Quran, but is the Hadith, would that be, um, w would that have the same power, the same level as the Quran to a Muslim? Well, not quite. Um, essentially, the Quran is supposed to be the words of Allah, the words of God. Uh, the Hadith essentially record, these are, when you read the Hadith, it, there'll be something like this. It'll say, Umar said that he heard Aisha say that he heard uh, Ahmed, you know, records that so-and-so said this. So essentially these are the recollections of his earliest followers who remembered and tried to write down everything that Muhammad ever said, did, forbid, or condoned. And so they have various classifications in terms of trustworthiness. If it's completely trustworthy, they call it Sahih. And then they have uh, four other categories, uh, the least of which is weak. And so there's a whole science to it. Uh, but nevertheless, what this does is it creates this, this vast corpus of literature 
that again much more vast than the Quran that allows these scholars to essentially mold and form Islam and, and really so in many ways Islam is whatever the Imam says it is whatever the Imam preaching from the mosque says it is and uh, it, it allows for a lot of manipulation uh, if you will well that brings up an interesting question then if I had to pin you down yes or no on this and I, you may I don't know if you want to do this or not but if I ha if I was looking for a yes or no answer is the religion of Islam dangerous? Would you answer that with a yes or no, or would you kind of qualify that? Well, no, it's absolutely dangerous. And, you know, look, as a, as a conservative, uh, conservative politically, theologically, et cetera, et cetera, morally, the only time that I generally encourage someone to become more liberal uh, is if they're a Muslim. <laughs> so I encourage, wow. I encourage Muslims not to follow the Quran. Now, ultimately, I'd prefer they just become a Christian, you know, if I could have my druthers. But if they're going to stay a Muslim, I'd prefer that they become more liberal and don't take their faith seriously because Islam is dangerous. Mm. It's the enemy of freedom. It's the enemy of equality. It's the enemy of, of the souls of mankind. And I know that's not politically correct to say, really, but if we love Muslims and if we love those affected by Islam, then we need to speak the truth. That's very true. Do you think, do you think Christians have been deceived by all this? Do you think they, they've been kind of duped? Well, in the West, absolutely. Uh, and unfortunately, within Islam, there is a large degree, not just of cultural uh, deception, but really sanctioned deception. When you look at the life of Muhammad, you have examples where some of his, uh, his disciples come to him and they say, Muhammad, you know, I've got some wealth, I've got uh, some people in this part of the country, can I go get it? The problem is it was hostile territory. He said, Muhammad, if I go, I'm going to have to deny you. Muhammad said, that's fine, do whatever you have to do. As long as you maintain faith in your heart, you can say whatever you want outwardly. Wow. And so this principle uh, guides how many Muslims today function, which is that when they're in the enemy's land, they're allowed to lie, to deceive, to misrepresent wow. Islam, even to deny essentials of their faith. Very different than Christianity, where Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. So Muslims in the West are frequently very deceptive and it's not to say that they are deceitful people but they often misrepresent Islam the Islam that we get here in the West I call it decaffeinated Islam <laughs> Islam light and many times it's even sort of a Christianized version of Islam and it's very different than the Islam that Muslims who live in the heart of the Muslim world uh, they they know that what we get over here is very different and unfortunately Muslims and the Islamic world understands us much better than we understand it. And they understand that we're gullible. And uh, yeah. the fact of the matter is we are a very gullible uh, culture. Wow. Good stuff. How do we, a uh, couple more questions. First of all, let me ask this one first. Why do they hate America? Well, there's a combination of reasons. I think, first of all, Muslims are taught, again in the Quran and in the Hadith, that they have the best religion that has ever been, that they have the best book, the Quran, it's the best holy book there is, that they are the best people. And so when they look out at the world and they go, wait a minute, the, the nation of unbelief, the nation of Kufar, they actually are prospering more than any nation in the world. They're the strongest nation in the world. The, it, it inspires uh, a tremendous amount of insecurity among Muslims who are taught that they're supposed to be. Uh, the leaders of the world. And so there's that. Uh, secondly, we largely are not a Muslim nation. I mean, we have maybe uh, several million or a few million Muslims in the country, and that's growing fast. Uh, but for the most part, we are a Christ Judeo Christian slash secular nation in terms of the majority that make up this country. Uh, and beyond all of this, of course, there's always the issue of Israel. We are an ally of Israel. And so, you know, I'll throw out this, this statement. We often hear among uh, various studies done that about roughly 15% of the Islamic world is radical. So just you do the calculations, 1.7 billion Muslims, roughly 15% of the Islamic world are radical. That's a large number. Yeah. Uh, what, what I always say is, if you want to find out who's really radical, you know, you think your neighbor's real peaceful and moderate, start talking to him about Israel and mm. see what gets stirred up. And you'll, then you'll begin to see the real number uh, of, of those that oftentimes are very moderate, peaceful people that live in the United States. But you mention Israel and they're, you know, they start, they're, they're, their veins start bubbling <laughs> and they're ready to, you know, start talking about murder. 
there so there's I I just always had this perspective that that there was a, a hatred inside of the Muslim religion for Israel, but it varies. You're saying it's varying from person to person significantly. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But for the most part, this is very, very, very rarely will you find a Muslim that will support Israel. There are some. Really? You know, occasionally you'll get some imam. There's one guy in Jordan. You know, there's one guy here. There's one guy there. Uh, there's an Italian imam that supports Israel. Because the fact of the matter is what's interesting is that in the Quran it says that Allah made a covenant with Israel to give them the land. There's a few verses like that. They don't pay attention to that. They pay attention to, for instance, there's a hadith, a very well-known hadith. You'll hear this preached throughout the mosques uh, in, in the Palestinian territories, really throughout the Islamic world. And it says, the day of resurrection will not come until the Muslims fight against the Jews and kill them until there are only a few Jews left hiding themselves behind a tree or a rock and then the tree of the rock will cry out and say oh faithful Muslim there is a Jew behind me come and kill him I mean this is right out of the book of Revelation but the, unfortunately this guides how many Muslims perceive Jews there they believe that they are divinely called to commit a genocide at the end of the age against the Jewish people unbelievable okay how do you reach these people then what what, what do you okay let's not Let's not go for the extremist, but your, your next door neighbor who's a Muslim, uh, the guy that owns the meat market down the street that's a Muslim, uh, how do you reach him? Well, you love him, you get to know him, you invite him over to your house just like you would anyone else. Uh, if at all possible, you get them a copy of the Bible, get the scriptures into their hands. Uh, yes, it's important to learn about Islam, it's important to train. Christians need to be trained. Muslims throughout the world are trained to reach us. Uh, the, the Christian world is way behind in terms of understanding Islam, knowing how to reach Muslims. Uh, so you can do all of that. Pray for them. Find out what their prayer needs are. Commit to them. Tell them that you'll pray for them. If you have the opportunity, if they have something going on, just say, hey, can I, you know, can I put my hand on your shoulder and pray for them right there and allow God to do the work? Um, yeah. Despite the fact that Islam is incredibly deceptive and Muslims are deceived by Islam, there are numerous Muslims coming to faith throughout the, the, the world. The nation of Iran right now has the fastest growing church in the world, 20% per year. These are people that have turned away from Islam. Wow. We're seeing the same things in Egypt right now. The church needs to realize that these are very God-conscious people, and, uh, mm. the, and the fields are white onto harvest. And what I want to see more than anything is to see a youth movement giving themselves to the Islamic world, because I believe he has a great remnant, a great harvest and they're exemplary believers when they come to faith. They're willing to lay down their lives, uh, unlike most Westerners that mm. uh, come to Jesus because they think he's going to make them rich or more happy or you know, whatever it might be. Wow. Man, get that book, The Islamic Antichrist, and read that. And Check Eric, out his movie coming out uh, the, really end, soon. End Times Eyewitness. You've I'm got watching to go that. that. I'm going to watch that. Joel, thank yeah. you so much for being on.